Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another WIST technology tutorial. In today's lesson, I'm going to continue to build on the curriculum mapping Google site that I've been working on. Um, I've added some interesting database functionality to this. Um, and I'm going to show a pattern that I've been using over and over again because I think it's useful in developing this uh, database-like feel for a, a Google site. Uh, so basically what I've added is a course descriptions bank. In other words, um, you could submit a description for a course into a spreadsheet, and then that spreadsheet is then filterable or sortable by keyword right in the Google site via an awesome table. And on top of that, um, the original course descriptions can be edited and re-edited and re-edited um, without adding another line of, or a row of data in the spreadsheet. So here's the workflow. Um, at the top, I have my awesome table. And again, this is just a gadget that is inserted via the insert menu on Google Sites. And it is pulling from a query on the spreadsheet. Um, and it's, it's just querying three columns. And then under the course title, in row two under course the course title heading i've added the string filter meaning that it is uh searchable via keyword so i can just start typing in here and it's going to find um courses with that title quite quickly um so below the awesome table is a regular embedded form and Question one is simply the course title. Now this course title question is being pulled using the form ranger add-on. What that allows you to do is pull uh, options via a spreadsheet column. So these are all existing courses um, that have units that have been submitted to the map essentially. So um, this column is regenerated every single time a form is submitted and also every hour. Um, so in some ways it seems a little bit counterintuitive that you would do the course description after you've already submitted a unit, but this was the best way that I could figure out how to get this all in sync. Um, so say for example I wanted to submit a course description for we'll say like nine biology and then I would of course just submit a unit uh, description of what we cover. Um, everything, we'll say biology, and this could be a, as lengthy as we wanted it to be. And I hit submit. Now what's happening on the back end is there's a script running that's going to, well first it's going to populate my spreadsheet and then the query will pull the course title and the course description into this table and then this edit the response URL link, this will be generated via a script which I'm about to show you um, right now. So let me just refresh the page. And you'll see that my course description has been added to the bank. And if I need to go in and edit this year to year, I simply click on this link. Um, and this could be even the person who did not originate this link, anyone else at the school could also modify this. So it makes it real easy uh, for people to work together on these things. Um, so if I click the link and it tells me right here, you are editing your previous response. And when I edit here, and click submit, it's not creating a new row of data. And if we look at the spreadsheet, and we'll refresh this as well, um, you're going to notice that it has this little triangle in the upper right-hand corner, meaning that this has been an updated value. So this keeps the data clean on the back end, uh, where you're just continually modifying the, uh, the course description in one row of data, as opposed to adding a new row each time the course changes. So how does this all work? Well, step one is, of course, just to uh, 
build the form, um, and I highly recommend using the Form Ranger script to pull your course titles from an existing spreadsheet already. That makes your life a lot easier in keeping the data uh, intact and not having to deal with people changing the spelling or using caps and no caps and so on and so forth. And then a simple paragraph text field that can be added. So now how do I get that edit response URL? Well, in the back end, um, what I did was I hunted around online for a script that would do it for me. So by simply doing, I googled literally just this first, these kind of words right here, assigning edit URLs, and I stumbled on this. So you could actually just type this into Google and it's gonna bring you to this page with this is literally a copy and paste script uh, that works really well. And then you can set a trigger to have it run on form submit. So that way it produces the edit response URL every time the form is submitted. Um, the only thing you have to really change here is you have to decide which column you want that URL to land in, right? So if you have a form like mine um, with one, two, three, four, I wanted the edit response URL to land in column five. Hence I changed this number here from four to five. Um, and you can see it puts it right here. Now, Awesome Tables is, is awesome, but it doesn't actually read hyperlinks automatically, okay? So this is where I had to use a little bit of creativity with uh, spreadsheet uh, functions and formulas to, to kind of produce another URL for my Awesome Table. All right, and this is including the HTML markup. So really, all I did was in column two, I just put in simple quotes, and then I put in the beginning of the hyperlink markup, and then I closed it off here. So in the line, in the subsequent line, or the subsequent rows, um, all of this is going to be concatenated into one um, link, right? So this is merely a concatenation of G3, F3, H3, F3, I3. And by kind of smashing all those together, um, you get this nice viewable um, or clickable hyperlink in the awesome table. So if I can get back to, let me leave that. If I can get back to this awesome table, it gives me a hyperlink. All right. So in my my script, of course, is just posted in. It's pasted into the script editor, and I just like I said, I changed this from four to five, and the rest kind of took care of business on its own. Oh, and I also pasted in my the ID of my my form. You also have to put in your own. This is the the key like the ID to the form, not the spreadsheet, but to the form behind all that data collection. So I hope this uh, workflow was useful for you. I know it's, it's kind of a repeating pattern throughout this entire project of mine, but I have found it extremely uh, reliable and useful in creating a, a database like Curriculum Map um, that allows teachers to browse the curriculum um, in keyword search and so on and so forth. So um, that's the latest update and I hope to produce some more documentation uh, in the very near future. Thanks for watching. Bye.